Hi there. My name's Mick Greenwood and I'm back with another tale of Mayfair. This one involves Shepherd Market, sometimes being described as the village of Mayfair. And it has something of a reputation. In the late 17th, early 18th century, it played host to a fair that started every May the 1st and went on for 15 days. And it was described as a riotous and tumultuous assembly in which many loose, idle and disorderly persons did rendezvous to gamble and commit lewdness. Well, Queen Anne, who only lived down the road, whenever she opened her windows of St. James Palace, she could hear all this lewdness going on loud and clear. So she decided to ban it in 1708. Um, but London couldn't go without gambling and lewdness for very long, so it came back. And this time it was the aristocratic residents of Mayfair who decided to get rid of this particular noisy neighbour by building on the land. So they got Edward Shepherd to develop it. And here he is immortalised in the Shepherd's Tavern just around the corner. Um, so it's not named after it's anything to do with sheep, it's named after him. And that reputation for lewdness carries on. Back in the 80s and 90s, you only had to ask Geoffrey Archer because he met a young prostitute called Monica Coughlin in Shepherd Market, and he tried to cover his tracks. And this led him to commit perjury, and he did four years in Belmarsh Prison. Um, but nowadays, you could go into any phone box in Shepherd Market and ring up one of these numbers on one of these postcards these naughty postcards. And if you stuck your head out of the door of the phone box while you were doing it, you'd hear the phone ring in one of these apartments above, so I'm told. Um, just around the corner to the phone box, there's Kitty Fisher's restaurant. This isn't named after the manager or the owner. This is named after a local resident. Kitty Fisher, a prominent and famous courtesan. You could describe a courtesan as someone that used etiquette to attract wealthy, powerful, influential clients. Or you could describe a courtesan as being a high class whore. Either way, she was well loved and admired for her beauty, her charm, her wits and her audacity. And she was born in Soho in 1741. And you might be able to tell from the spelling of Fisher with her parents there, that uh, they were of German extraction. And she became a milliner and then became a prostitute. That wasn't an unusual route to take. A lot of women started in the hat shop and then ended up working in the knocking shop upstairs. Um, so, like I say, she was greatly admired despite her profession. And she um, really uh, cultivated a public persona. The era that she lived in the 18th century was one of capitalism, commercialization, but also an era when public opinion was becoming more and more important. And she was one of the first people in British history to become a celebrity, not for being an actress or a singer um, or a princess. She was famous just for being famous. Um, plenty of people like that around today. And her, Lifestyle was lavish, to say the least. It was said that she spent £12,000 a year, every year, on her lifestyle. That's a lot of money in the 1750s. And she was also the first person of her social class to have liveried servants, servants, servants with um, uniforms like these two chaps, chairman, carrying around in a sedan chair. There are some great stories about her. Giacomo Casanova. Um, he met her just after she'd become very fashionable and he said that she was beautiful and fantastically well dressed and wore diamonds worth 500,000 francs. And he was told that he could have her there and then for 10 guineas, but he turned his nose up at her because she wouldn't speak French to him. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and there's a story about her eating a 50 pound note um, between two slices of bread and butter. She wasn't doing this to show off her wealth. It was because the man who had left this as a tip, the Duke of York, no change there then, um, she wanted to tell him that 
next time he wanted to leave a tip like that, leave it in diamonds. And she wanted to climb the social ladder. One of her arch rivals was Maria Gunning, who was a former actress and Irish beauty. And um, after a calculated insertion into the marriage market orchestrated by her mother, she married Lord Coventry, becoming Lady Coventry. And it had been rumoured that Kitty was having an affair with Lord Coventry. And Maria ran into Kitty in the park one day and Maria said, that's a lovely dress you have on Kitty. Do you have the name of the dressmaker? And Kitty said, why don't you ask Lord Coventry? Because he bought it for me. Ooh, meow. Um, she was in the park on her horse, St. James's Park. And the horse got startled, reared up and threw her off the back. As she fell, her skirts flew up, revealing to everybody in the vicinity that she wasn't wearing any knickers. At first, she was terribly embarrassed and in tears, mortified. But then she regained her composure and started laughing and called for a sedan chair. Witnesses at the time were speechless, but they soon told a lot of people and the press had a field day. There were songs written about her, articles and satirical cartoons, just like this one. She was also painted by the best artists around. This is Joshua Reynolds and Nathaniel Hone. These are Royal Academy artists and they were contemporaries, but they were also rivals. And they would paint Kitty and these paintings would be turned into engravings and made into prints and sold to thousands and thousands of Kitty's fans. She was one of the first glamour girl pinups all the way back in the 18th century. So here's a few. Here's a lovely bird sitting on top of Kitty Fisher's hand by Joshua Reynolds. It was rumoured that Joshua Reynolds was having an affair with Kitty, um, but we don't know. We think that because he painted her in all sorts of very relaxed and intimate um, surroundings. Here's one, Kitty Fisher as Cleopatra dissolving the pearl. The story of Cleopatra is that she dissolved a pearl in her wine to impress Mark Antony, her boyfriend. So this is a similar thing, but what she's doing here, she's got a pearl here dissolving in wine, but this gesture doesn't mean much to us today, but in the 18th century, that gesture was very, very rude. And um, this may be the most famous one. This is by Nathaniel Hone. And instead of writing her name at the bottom of the painting, he's described her with a kitten, with his little paw in a goldfish bowl, Kitty Fisher. And if you can see this, there's a reflection in the goldfish bowl. And that is a reflection of people peering in through the window, looking at Kitty being painted. And um, she really did live life like she was in a goldfish bowl. Um, there are songs. Lucy Lockett lost her pocket. Kitty Fisher found it. Not a penny was there in it. Only ribbon round it. Now, there's the obvious gag here about comparing pockets to the private parts of prostitutes. But also the ribbon. That was how prostitutes tied their purse to their thigh with ribbon. But the whole thing was about Lucy Lockett and her boyfriend or client, whatever you want to call him. He spent all of his money on Lucy. And when he was now penniless, she dumped him. But Kitty Fisher liked him. She thought he was witty and charming and handsome and attractive and young. And she took this young man on, even though he was potless. Um, so there you go. Um, she did eventually settle down, Kitty Fisher, and she married John Norris, who was a son of an MP. And they married in Scotland, away from his interfering parents, who thought that John was a terrible degenerate. So she reformed his character. She reformed him. Um, she built up his fortune again. They went to live in um, Hempstead in Kent. And they lived in a house which is now a very exclusive girls' school called Ben Enden. Um, and she was loved by the villagers of Ben Enden. And uh, yeah, because she was very generous, very generous to the poor, especially. But unfortunately, when she was away in the city of Bath, she suddenly died. And um, people said it may be consumption or the pox 
Some people even said it was from lead poisoning, from the makeup that women used to wear at the time. But we think they're confusing her with the death of Maria Gunning, who definitely died from that. So she was buried in Ben Endon Churchyard in 10, 1767. And um, she was buried, according to her wishes, wearing her finest ball gown. So poor old Kitty was only 25. Uh, is it possible to fall in love 